Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems. We are talking in more detail about how our optic cut works. A few of you asked questions about uh, how the optic stays in a rigid mounted position, and so I'm gonna explain that now. So let's have a look at the table. We actually just took an optic off one of the guns at the show here, so sorry the screws are a little bit uh, covered with Loctite still, but I figure you wouldn't care. Um, so let me explain what I have on the table here. So first, this is what the optic cut looks like with a cover plate or with the optic removed. Um, a couple key things to point out. The first is uh, we have relocated the extractor depressor plunger assembly. That's a key part of our patent uh, application. And that allows us to drive the screws deep, deep, deep into the slide. In fact, they basically come out at the rail, okay? So, okay, great. We got great big long screws and now we have got a clearance for them going all the way down. But I'm noticing, Trevor, that there's, there's no bosses here, there's no threaded posts, so how does the optic keep from twisting? Well, I'm glad you asked. Okay, so we did something a little unconventional here, and I'm gonna show you how it works. And we're gonna go ahead and remount this Trigicon uh, on this gun. And again, sorry, it's, it's got some uh, Loctite on it for the optic having been on here for the show, but I didn't think you guys would care. Um, I'm gonna flip the, the gun around this way. So the, the mounting system comes with screws that are designed for um, a specific family of optics. So for example, the screws that are shown here um, are the ones that are for the RMR and the hollow sun optic. We have different screws which are taller and longer that are for the uh, loophole, Delta Point Pro, and so on. There's other screws as well. Okay, so all of that is to say that you first have to select the right screws. Now, this screw is probably, oops, this screw is probably the best example of what it looks like. You'll notice there's a section here uh, where the the screw does not have threads. At that location, it is about the same diameter as the, uh, the hole in the optic, so it really reduces a lot of the fit between the optic or the slop between the optic and the gun um, at that location. So that's kind of the first place where things tighten up. But the secret sauce is actually in this spacer, and I'm gonna show you how this spacer works. So on the back of the optic cut, and sorry if the lighting's bad, it may be difficult to see, but on the back of the optic cut, can you see that, Richie? I don't know what's best. There, right there, that's good. Right there, we've got these two openings in the slide. They're two kind of small little half circles that are designed to receive a corresponding half circle on this spacer here, okay? And the spacer is designed with the outside diameter of the optic in mind, okay? So here's how this works. If I was to just mount this optic here, I would have a space to the rear, okay? so. Look, we didn't like that just from a, you know aesthetics perspective. We want things to look very fitted and great. But also, even if the screws are tightly torqued and they're properly Loctited, and even though the screws fit tightly into the optic itself, I still am aware that with a strong enough blow, the optic could potentially turn or twist a little bit. And I know that because we pounded on them with dead blow hammers. <laughs> so I know exactly how much it can move. Um, so what we did is we designed this spacer out of a really hard plastic uh, it's keyed and so it locks into those little cavities and it really, once it's under compression, it really cannot come out. And it's designed to be just a little tiny bit oversized. So when you put the optic in position, you'll notice, now this one's already been somewhat compressed, but you'll notice that it is a little bit too big for the space. And as I look down in these holes, I can actually see that they're a little off center right now, okay? So what happens now is I put my screws in. And when I put my screws in, it compresses this spacer at the back under a substantial amount of pressure. Tightening these screws even to 10 inch pounds really, really draws the sight back toward the spacer. One of the downsides, by the way, as I do this, of our system is that the screws are so long you will find yourself getting muscle failure in your wrist installing your optic, but that's a good thing. So anyway, we're gonna turn these screws in and it's gonna take a minute. All right, as I tighten this, I'm noticing already feeling some tension as it's pulling the optic back toward the spacer. I do it again on this side. All right, so I get this thing all the way in, and it's a little tighter to turn in just because it's got old Loctite on it, but you guys get the idea. Now these screws happen to be uh, in, the, in their raw stainless form. We just grabbed them off the machine before we jumped on the plane. Uh, but they're, they're actually going to be black real world, and they're made out of a, a really incredible material that is also very strong in its own right. We did something else, by the way, before I tighten these. So the openings in the top of the screws, these are not cold formed, these are machine screws, so that is a broach cut opening. So we made it deep. 
So when you stick this tool in there, I'm not gonna say that they're strip proof, but you'd have to be really trying to try to strip one of these, these screws, okay? So the torque setting is normally um, between 10 and 20 inch pounds. 10 is more than adequate. Um, and so I'm just gonna do it manually. Okay, so what's happening right now is, as soon as I torque those screws, I am drawing the optic tight back toward that spacer and it is compressing it. Even though that, even though most plastics guys would tell you that's like a non-compressible plastic, it is being compressed a little tiny bit and there, it creates an incredibly rigid um, overall mounting system because the optic physically cannot turn when it's drawn back toward the, uh, the spacer. And so for different optics, we have different spacers. In fact, some are in the front, some are in the rear. It just kind of depends, but they're all designed to be oversized. Now, you're thinking to yourself, well, but that's plastic. How is that better than a, uh, a machined one? Well, let me explain. So, it is true that you can very, very tightly machine either threaded posts or maybe bosses in the front to fit into the cavities on the RMR, and that's great. But I don't care how great of a machinist you are, you're still gonna have a little tiny bit of fit. Even after dry, driving those screws in tight, you're still going to have a little tiny bit of fit if it's metal to metal, which is what you would be doing if you're machining the slide to specifically fit inside the optic. By doing it this way, you create zero fit. So when this thing gets compressed, it is under a tremendous amount of, of compression to the rear and the optic simply cannot twist. So that is kind of an overview of how the optic system works, how the screws work, um, and that is why it is a patent pending system that we think is going to be a really big deal in the industry. So come check it out. Shadow Systems builds guns that run. We build re reliable parts and we build systems that we really believe in and this is one of them. So um, I think you'll, you'll find that it gives you the flexibility that you want um, at really no compromise for strength.